Hello everyone, this is Robert. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Canon AE-1 film camera. So this is an SLR camera, 35mm film, of course. And it's a great camera for beginners or semi-advanced photographers. Um, so let's get into some of the components of this camera. Most of the time when you find this camera, it will come with a fixed focal length 50mm 1.8 lens, which is a great lens. It is, uh, like I said, goes up to 1.8, so you have a quite large aperture, so shooting indoors or in dim situations is totally possible. And uh, also, uh, without a flash indoors is a, a big positive with this. So, other parts of the camera. Let's go into shutter speed. So shutter speeds go from 1000 all the way down to infinite infinite with this B right here and also 2 seconds if you see that orange 2 second mark right there. Um, and it has a cloth shutter. A lot of the other SLRs of this time used a metal shutter. This has a cloth shutter so let's check that out. Got it in a two second shutter right there. So just like most cameras of that time, just pulling up, pulling up this rewind is going to open up the film door. Uh, ISO or ASA. This can shoot from, if you'll see right here, if you pull this you, and lift this up, you can adjust what ISO you want to shoot at. And so usually I shoot at 400 because it's a very readily available uh, film. And uh, it can go from 25 all the way to 3200. And I don't really see a lot of those extremes anymore for film. So 400, 200, occasionally 100 and great light situations. Those are what I would recommend shooting with this. Um, other than that, let's talk about some of the other parts of the camera. So, uh, at the top right here, this button is a battery check. When you press this button down, there will be the needle in the viewfinder, and if it goes to center, your battery is fine. If it drops low, your battery is getting low. Uh, this other button right here, that is uh, to check whether you're under or overexposed, your light meter. So if you press this down and the blinking light on the bottom is going nuts, that means you're underexposed. So either open your aperture more or slow down your shutter speed and you should be fine. Um, when you take this camera, about the lens, this is an automatic mode here. When you go into manual mode for the f-stops, when you go into this manual mode, when you do a half stop on here, there'll be a blinking M at the top. And what that means is that you're in manual mode. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong happening. It just means that you are in manual mode. So be aware of that. Um, let's see. So essentially when you are in this automatic mode, when you put it back to that A, you're in a shutter priority mode. So you select the shutter and the camera selects the best aperture, which is great for street photography when you want to do things quickly. Um, it's a great option to have. Uh, other than that, uh, let's see other parts of the camera. You have a hot shoe, of course, for your flash. You also have a PC sync port, which is for very old flashes right here. Uh, not a lot of flashes that you'll find nowadays have those. Of course, you can find stuff with PC sync, but it's not really necessary. If on top of the shutter release, you have a screw in for a remote, which is very useful for getting uh, Chris shots at low light because you can use this on a tripod of course and then if you're if you're pressing that there's always going to be a little bit of movement to your camera but if you use the remote you're going to get great freeze rates to your photos and also for uh if you're using this that infinite mode that I was talking about right there that B that's going to allow you to press it and just have the camera sit still for three to five seconds and then release and you can get some pretty uh great photos in low light situations uh, lots of great ambient light. Um, so other parts of the camera, let's see. Two batteries. There's your battery door on the front. If you press down this little guy here, you can open it up. And then there's another battery here. You see a coin to release that and you're good to go. Uh, when you're buying this camera used, please open them first. Look to see if any of the batteries have exploded, if there's any corrosion. If there is, there's a high chance that you won't be able to use 
the the light meter because if the batteries don't work on it, the light meter won't work, which is a big disadvantage to this camera. So be aware of that. Also, when you're buying this camera used, look at the lens closely. Uh, is there any scratches on the lens? Is there any mold on the inside of the lens? If there is, I would almost just chuck the lens and just say how much for the body because you can find the lenses for dirt cheap. Uh, if you're just buying the body, I wouldn't spend more than $25, $30 on it. I got this one with the body and the lens for $40 with the manual in pretty good condition. It has one dent right here, uh, but other than that, it works perfectly and that's all I was really concerned about. Um, so the lenses are FD mounts. All you do is press this silver guy right here and you can use any FD mount lens that you want. Um, so, there's plenty of different FD uh, mount lenses you can get. Uh, 28 millimeters, 35 millimeters, 50 millimeters. You can get zooms from 30 to 35 to 70 millimeters, 200 millimeter zooms. There's tons of lenses. You can even find one, one or two automatic focus lenses for this camera, but they're large, they're very large, they're white, they take four batteries. Uh, they make the camera very front heavy, so shooting on the street is kind of awkward with it, so I wouldn't be too inclined to use it. I got one before and I used it for a while, but it's just so awkward and conspicuous. It looks like you're a pro, but really you just have a really slow focusing auto autofocus lens, so yeah. Also keep in mind, if you do think like, ah, oh, I'm investing too much money into this old camera for lenses, just keep in mind you can get adapters to use these lenses with an EOS digital camera as well. So especially for me, I'm considering getting the 15mm 1.4 lens and getting an EOS adapter and using it on my EOS camera as well. Um, so yeah, that's another positive thing about it. So on and off, the camera's on right now with this guy right there, if I go like that. The shutter will not fire if I go like that. No fire, then boom, my shutter will fire. Mm, so I give this camera uh, about a 8.5 in terms of satisfaction. Um, with some of the other cameras I have at the, at the same time period, I have a shutter priority mode and an aperture priority mode. I can set it to both. This only has a shutter priority mode. Which is fine, uh, still when you're getting used to shooting, you don't really need both of them, I would say. But once you get a little more advanced, you'd like to have both. Um, let's see. Other than that, what else can I say about this camera? It's quite durable, it looks like it's all metal. It's partly plastic on the backs. A lot of the inside is plastic as well. The shutter barrel is, pla I mean, the, the lens barrel is plastic. Um, just make sure when you're buying it, you get one with a lens that's in good condition because the lens is really going to be the most important factor of it. If the camera looks a little beat and it still works, don't worry about it. If the lens is in good condition, you're fine. If you find one that has a lens protector on it and it has a case with it, most likely it's been taken care of for most of its life, so I wouldn't be too concerned about it in terms of the condition. Uh, so I'm going to leave you with some photos that I took with this camera about a couple weeks ago. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy those. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be glad to help you out with that. Thanks again, and I appreciate you watching. Have a nice day.